Hey everybody, Jeff Antoniak here. Welcome to the Guided Listening, sponsored by Jazzwire. So, uh, if you're watching this in real time, it's December 23rd or December 24th of 2022. And of course, the holidays, it's Christmas, it's Hanukkah, everything else. And uh, for, so first of all, happy holidays to all of you and thank you for your support. Thank you for watching these videos. And for those of you who are subscribers to Jazzwire, we've got hundreds of people all around the world, adult amateurs, semi-pros like you. It is a blast working with you seven days a week. For those of you not yet inside Jazzwire, jump into a 30-day free trial. I would love to work with you. I wanna see, I want for you to see what all these other folks are doing and how you can work with us and get better and understand this music better and better. Well, okay, it being the holiday season, it's pretty difficult, at least here in North America, to not be thinking of the Peanuts, Charlie Brown, Charles Schultz Christmas special that first aired in 1965. I was not even knee-high to a grasshopper. Uh, maybe I was knee-high to a medium-sized grasshopper. Uh, yeah, so uh, you can do the math. Uh, the, so much great music from this and it was jazz and man, it was swinging. So, so, uh, Vince Guaraldi, piano player, and you know, I never knew much about him, but you know, sort of, of course, before the internet, you know, some, I guess he was from the Bay area, somebody said, and of course now we can, you know, find out about Jerry Grinelli, who was playing drums. I think it was Fred Marshall on bass, but you know, not names that we know, but Probably most people on earth have heard this trio more than they've heard McCoy Tyner or Oscar Peterson. So, and they were great. These guys could really, really play. So um, so let's listen to this little short three-minute tune. You've all heard it a million times, but there's a lot of cool things going on. And the fact that this was TV, primetime TV music just, you know, blows my mind. It's awesome. Um, the playing, uh, the fantastic writing and how, you know, Vince Guaraldi really brought these characters to life, the Peanuts characters, right? Um, but there's all kinds of hip things going on with the feel. There's at least two or three different kinds of feel in this three minute song. That seems like it would be a lot of moving around. Um, maybe, you know, if I'm producing this, I'm kind of wondering like, really Vince, you want to do three different, you know, feels? Um, and all this jumping around and there's some improvising and, you know, I wish there was more improvising on it. So I tell you what, let's, uh, let's jump into it and listen to Linus and Lucy. All right. So we hear that piano up front. The acoustic bass is doubling that bass line. The bass line changes the second time. Oh, a nice harmonic shift there. And of course, the brushes. That engine pumping along. And this harmonic shift up a minor third. It's really slick. Back down to where we started. Stop time. And that classic piano fill but it's the same fill each time. So he's not trying to be improvising and showing off. That fill is part of the composition. So here's the song a whole second time. We've heard it all already. Up a minor third. So can you tell where that change is gonna happen? Ooh, so they did go back. So they did a shortened version there. So a stop and now a bossa nova. Interesting. So here's our second feel. And now we're not hearing the same material and it's different chord changes. Chord, I think it's down a whole step. Goes down again, comes back up. Bossa nova. Interesting. And <laughs> for a short amount of time, now we're back to the melody. Okay. Interesting. <clears throat> And now it's a composed bass line, composed left hand of the piano. There's an extension there. So the form keeps changing. Swinging, okay, third feel. We're about two minutes in. But listen to that. Damn, that's swinging. Woo. And listen to the articulation, the right hand, the solo, how, you know, how uh, energetic the lines are. There's a lot of variation uh, in the articulation. It's great. 
and back to the melody. I could have listened to that him blow for 10 minutes, but we didn't get that, right? I wonder why. Maybe we'll talk about that. So here's our melody. And we're ending. So we're already into it. Vamp. We're not even hearing the whole melody at the end of the song. Okay, hanging out. Vamp. Cool. Dynamics. <laughs> Seems like we're decrescendoing. And that's not a board fade. That's the band getting softer. Cool. So in the guided listenings, if you've heard some of these, we've heard some board fades where, you know, literally in the control room, they turn the volume down. People are still playing full blast. We can hear what that sounds like. Here, we actually heard the band using dynamics. So that was a really weird, um, so three, you know, like I said, three feel changes and the form kept changing, not, not only with the feel and different chord changes, but you know, sometimes we had the mel the full melody, then we had the melody played a second time, but it was shorter. Then we had a hint of the melody. Then we had a bit of the melody vamping. So like, what was all that about in three minutes? Like, could they not have, why? So I think I know why. This is for a TV show, right? This isn't a jazz album. Why was it three minutes long? I bet Vince and the Cats would have loved to have played longer. But that was how long the cue was, right? That's how long that section needed to be. And now I'm not sure how fancy they got in 1965 with, you know, did they knew they were going to cut to Linus on the piano, so they wanted to have piano there. Did they know that, you know, Snoopy was going to be dancing at that part? So, I'm, you know, I'm not sure how, how deep they went. They, that would absolutely be happening today. The music would be composed, you know, to the to the animation or vice versa. Now it could have been, here's the animation. Okay, here's the song I wrote. Let's bang these things together. Could have been that, but absolutely that's, uh, that's what was going on. And of course, this is a three minute song. So it's perfect for airplay. Whether, whether that's something they were thinking of, three minutes to three minutes and 30 seconds at least used to be what you need to get airplay, you know, on, on any kind of standard AM radio kind of stuff. If you're listening to a jazz, you know, uh, Internet, radio, of course, that doesn't matter anymore. But the song was just perfect for public consumption. You know, Ma and Pa sitting on the on the sofa and everything. And uh, I don't really know the business deal that Vince and the guys got, but man, I hope they negotiated it well. Because, you know, if he's not a, uh, you know, multiple, multiple, multi, 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 multi millionaire by now, somebody is. And... Uh, We've got the composer, we've got three great musicians here, and I, I just hope to uh, heaven that uh, the bass player who didn't write the song got more than the 120 bucks he was probably paid for this recording session. But it's not impossible. He got paid 120 bucks, and it's been played, you know, hundreds of millions of times since. That's kind of how the industry goes sometimes. So uh, anyway... Interesting, right? So there's some great playing in there. So if, if um, you know, you're all jazz musicians listening to this, I'm sure you have listened into this music a little bit, but do that. Sit down at the piano and see if you can figure out, you know, the relatively simple chord changes. There's some beautiful songs, you know, that came from this. Christmas Time is Here is one that I've recorded. It's a fantastic tune with all sorts of Lydian sounds and, you know, great, great jazz changes. So uh, it's really worth investigating. So, uh, you know, thank you for uh, letting me do this little holiday edition here. And uh, jazz musicians, what do you get a jazz musician, uh, you know, for Christmas aside from like a new Reed or, uh, you know, something, possibly a new Bosendorfer piano. But um, I contend that you should probably attend the Jazzwire Winter Summit. It's coming up January 27 through 29. As of today, we have seven spots left. We keep it small so that we can have conversations with our super special guests. George Coleman on the saxophone, Buster Williams on bass, Tia Fuller on the saxophone. I'm going to be teaching Paul Boland back from New York City. And of course, this is all done online so that folks around the country and around the world can attend. Um, and, uh, I know we're all a little tired of, you know, online kind of stuff. We built this in a way that works like crazy. Everybody that attends has a blast and is surprised that about how inspired, what they were able to learn and how much playing we get done. There's a ton of playing. This isn't sitting and watching a zoom call. 
No, 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 you're involved, you are playing more than you would be playing in a room together, believe it or not. So uh, get in touch with me. We can talk about how it works. If you have any questions, seven spots left. They're gonna be gone soon enough, right? So why don't you grab your spot today? Happy holidays, take care.